I haven't picked which openings I want to play, but I'm probably going to play something very aggressive. Uh, let's play a Sicilian. Okay, am I paired against Stefan again? Like, who else plays uh, the knight c3 Sicilian? I do wonder. Alright, now I play h4. I've played this before. It's kind of fun, in a way. Um, the problem is if you play queen d2, you have to figure out where the bishop is going to go. And here, in this case, black has not castled, so um, yes, I am kind of trapping my knight, but I do have the h6 square under control, even more so than usual. Um, yeah, I'm just going to have some fun here, as if this is a blitz game. Um, so my knight on d4, that's the square in the center, is kind of invincible. Um, I mean, yes, it can be taken, but there are consequences if it's captured. That the knight would have to move, and uh, this, that the, I would have a pawn that becomes a thorn in my opponent's position. So, I play knight d4 because the knight's not going anywhere else. Otherwise, the knight could support an attack like knight e7 and then pawn d5 or pawn f5, and the knight would just hang back here, but that's not so great. Um, plus, if I'm considering knight takes bishop, I probably don't want my uh, this knight to be unable to use this d4 square. So I'm trying to encourage either knight f3 or knight e2, so I can take here and then exchange the knights also, and just have a relatively calm endgame. Um, so this is what I want to play, but I'm also trying to encourage some sort of trap. Like if I just put my pieces aggressively into the center, uh, likely something good is going to happen. Um, Next thing I can consider is, oh, okay, so he does capture. So I have to consider uh, which way I take this. C takes is the dull way to handle this. Um, it's actually pretty damn strong because uh, it keeps the long diagonal closed and gives me control of the half-open C file. So, yeah, that's where we're going to go. Um, and then let's attack this knight. So the cheapo that everyone's waiting for is bishop h6, uh, which lands in the event that somehow I have the square defended and this pawn on f2 is no more. Um, or, yeah, perhaps in this case, too, it could be a possibility. Um, so if they capture on g4 and then castle queenside, uh, I have bishop h6 winning the queen or at least winning material. There might be some way to like lose the knight instead of the queen. Um, but yeah, they've created this very tense position. Um,
I'm going to support my pawns in the center. This does weaken the g5 square. However, queen g5 uh, loses material because of the pawn and the h file is pinned. It cannot capture back here. So this encourages a decision, castling one direction or the other. Um, both castling directions are perilous for different reasons. Uh, so instead my opponent chooses not to castle, but instead to try to open the board while I have the bishop pair. Uh, interesting strategy. This does support the knight, so I'm heavily inclined to just take the pawn, but I'm also inclined to... So I have this capture and this capture to consider. Um, I'm thinking taking the pawn in the center is even stronger. Um, yeah, this frees the way for me to perform additional captures. So this pawn is supporting both pawns. Um, so if they do that, I get a free pawn on c4 and deny them the ability to castle queenside. Um, that's the worst possibility. I might have even better if bishop h6 somehow just wins outright. I don't think it does. So yeah, let's grab the pawn, I guess. So queenside castling has been denied. If they play rook c1, I still have bishop h6 as a threat. If they castle kingside, maybe there's some way I can sack on h4. Um, doubtful, but maybe. Also, bishop takes d5 is an idea. Um, also, depending how things go, Castling might be an idea. Um, so these are things. I control lots and lots of squares. Um, right, so he plays the predictable move. And I think here I collect... Well, if I try to collect the d-pawn and then queen takes on d5, they have queen takes g6. That would be a bit over eager of me. Um, so this queen cannot uh, go to g5 anymore. g5 is out of range. Um, therefore, perhaps I'm interested in queen c8. I don't see it immediately threatening anything. does reinforce my control over the C file. Yeah, let's do it. So I control this square, among other things. This is potentially an idea. Um, I guess not right now because my queen is stuck defending both the rook oh, and the other side of the board. All right, so he elects to not castle. Um, I think he... Well, it's very tempting to castle in response to a non-castling move. Um, this players feel safe when they get a chance to castle, but my rook is exposed on this file. Um, Yeah, 
I think this is possibly my safest move. Threatening this twice, moving the rook out of harm's way so I could play queen f5 and then castle. Um, yeah, so these are ideas. Um, I don't think rook takes d5 will work, but now maybe it does. Um, so if rook takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, check. I have to remember this is hanging. Um, so we want to castle before we do any of this. Or we want to take and then bishop f5 and then bishop e4. If there's no way to stop that two move sequence, but that can be stopped by queen b5. So yeah, let's note castling is dangerous. Just kidding. Um all right. Interesting. Castling would lose the queen, so we'll have to pick something different. Um, This is awkward. All right, I think this will be fine. So the idea is if rook c1, perhaps I take on d5 and attempt to insist that things will be okay. Um, this actually does nothing to help me castle, unless I'm considering taking d5 twice. And even then, maybe I don't want to castle, because um, it doesn't defend the g-pawn. Yeah, what I'm considering is taking twice and then pushing e4. Which just is okay. Well, that's sharp. I don't understand. Seems flawed multiple ways. Let's. Oh, uh, the simplest way out is not always the simplest, is it? Um. Hmm. All right, screw it. We don't need a rook. Um, interesting. Um, I guess we have to move the queen out of harm's way.
Maybe taking the rook was the right thing to do here. Because now my rook is trapped on d5. Yeah, every opponent in this tournament is very good. This is a competitive chess club in a state in USA where it's just very competitive in chess. So, um, yeah, it's hard to find more competitive amateur places. Um, and part of that might be my fault for taking some previous uh, competitions too seriously and encouraging other players to also take it quite seriously. This used to be a really fun thing to do, and some of the novelty of that is kind of wearing off. Alright, so if they take on d5, I have queen f3 check. Um, if they don't exchange queens, yeah, okay. Well, good tournament. Back to tournament. Two games remain. Yeah, we're playing sharp stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. Take backs can be useful. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, Swiss tournaments, I don't think, have take backs because we want to keep them moving. Um, yeah, I think I just psychologically overwhelmed my opponent. It's not that I played better moves, it's just that I psyched them out into playing uh, inferior ones. I tend to have that effect where I'll get a terrible position and just double down, triple down, just play very aggressively. And eventually the opponent does not find the correct move and it's over. Which is sad. And I'm thankful that in Shogi... Um, it's kind of different, where uh, opponents who occasionally miss a move or miss two moves, um, who still play well, still have an opportunity to win. It takes a consistent performance to um, win. Yeah, I don't understand why this tournament's password locked, because it's also only available to members of the club. Um, so it's, um, it kind of encourages publishing of the password. But also, as we're meeting players from our club online, um, we want to understand who they are. But that's uh, the responsibility of the team leader to verify a person's identity. That doesn't have to be done at time of entering the tournament. If they somehow made it into the club on Leech Us, then... Um, Anyway, let's check out the game. Oh, check it out. We've activated Earthquake mode. Um, people have reported this bug. I don't really have a way to fix it right now. That's unfortunate, so we're going to have to spectate the game this way. Yeah, I've not had any time lately to dig into that. Um, thankfully this game has ended, as white has lost all of their pieces. Um, well, we're threatening to fork the king and the pawn, and bishop takes rook does nothing to help white's woes here. Um, yeah, I wonder. Still, Chrome is the main browser that the developers test with, I think. Some developers do have Firefox and other non-Chromium engine-based browsers, or non-WebKit browsers, but, um, yeah, no, I would expect things to work in Chrome, but 
I'm probably the only developer who uses a 720p display. And the reason I use a 720p display is so that I can live stream it and players can watch the live stream. Um, if I were to use a 1080p or some other resolution display, then it would be harder for people to actually watch this. So it's unfortunate that we have to spectate this way instead of looking at the game directly, but uh, there's nothing I can do about that. I think we did file a bug um, in the Leechess forum, in the Leechess Discord, and in the Leechess GitHub. I think that issue has been filed and documented to or the best of our knowledge as to what browsers it occurs in and at what display resolutions with what versions of those browsers. It's just that it hasn't, I don't know, made it to the top of the list of things to address just yet for some reason. And that's fine if we got other priorities too. My main focus has been just trying to get the Stockfish 12 engine stable. Uh, even without the neural network. And I think I've succeeded at that. Um, so. Uh, reason I think I've succeeded is because the Stockfish 12 is playing against Stockfish 11, and even without aid of the neural network uh, data files, um, 12 is still winning, uh, I forget what the margin is, but it, for 9,400 games, the estimation is that it is 1515 ELO stronger than, um, 11 is. All right, so Rook G1, Rook D1 would seem to be a repetition here. I don't see... well, actually no, bishop e1 could win. So bishop e1 might be worth trying. Uh, black takes the repetition, as black should, because it looks like bishop e1 followed by bishop h4 could win the knight and the endgame. We have 30 second break between rounds. Yeah, maybe if I had time to think. Yeah. A two-second increment is not much, and a 30-second break between rounds is not much either. But the two-second increment, I think, is vital, and really, it's crazy that 10 plus 0 is even a thing. All right, uh, let's play the King's Gambit. This is sound, right? So we got Fisher's d6 against the King's Gambit. I can't say I'm like super familiar with this. Although I've played it a number of times, I'm not an expert. What I'm trying to avoid is Bishop c5. And I think I will successfully avoid Bishop c5 this game. Unless I do something crazy. All right, what? What is the object of this move? Let me continue developing, and we'll see uh, what my opponent has in mind. So, I have a choice between four candidate moves. Either piece taking on b5, which looks insane. I could take on e5 here, which I think loses a piece, but I'm not sure. Bishop d5 is more interesting. Bishop b3 is what I had intended. Um, so this is what I intended. This is another candidate. Taking here is a candidate. Taking there is a candidate. <sighs> um, it'd be nice if one of these captures somehow won. I just don't think it's that simple. Um... That'd be so nice. 
If I take, if they take my bishop, if I take the knight, queen takes, bishop g5, queen g6, castle, h6, bishop moves, bishop h3, I'm in trouble. So yeah, that's no good. Um, yeah, I'm thinking this is my best attempt here. Oh, bishop takes f7 here was an idea too. Um, yeah, didn't even see that. That could have been fun for some definitions of fun. Um, I think I should just castle and forget that my opponent's doing anything. Right. All right, so this is sharp. Um, a point to note is that I'm threatening this followed by that. So this wins a pawn. This is just a pawn in clean daylight. So, um, not sure I have too much more to say about that trick. I forget what book first showed me this trick. I think it was a book instead of a person. I just don't recall. Um, right, and so this is possible too. Um, problem here is that the king is terribly exposed. So let's continue attacking the king. If knight takes, then I can do bishop takes knight. And not a whole lot has changed here. Uh, bishop g5 is a possibility. Bishop takes a8 is a possibility. Um, unfortunately, there's not a Legales mate, like a checkmate in the center of the board, but we can win the queen. Maybe it was Rosen who showed this. Maybe it was. He's got a lot of crafty stuff. Um, let me think about this here. Uh, so if knight e5, I'm controlling this, this, yeah, knight e5, king here, bishop takes wins. So there's three threats here. One is this capture, two is this, and three is if the king goes back in the center, bishop f7 is mate. Um... So in this position, we take the queen and then take the bishop and then win the rook. Now, it might be possible to trap this knight as well. Right. Um, and we win the rook. And the king's still under attack. Paul Morphy would be proud. Maybe. Maybe not. Rook f7, does it mate? I don't think rook f7 mates. Therefore, I should just win the other rook. But taking the knight might be better. Um... Interesting how taking the knight, bishop c5, pawn takes... yeah. This is actually more aggressive, so we're going to pick this. And it strongly indicates bishop c5, which is met by rook f6. Um, so, 
I've encouraged my opponent to give up their bishop. The rook is still cornered. Mate follows swiftly somehow. All right. Yeah, tough break. Super tough break. Have any of you guy have you used guys seen the queen's gambit queen's gambit on netflix a lot of people have said it's good yeah i i have my reservations i think it's it sounds as if it's entertaining i've read the plot summary for all of the episodes, because I was curious um, what sorts of events would be p depicted inside of uh, uh, some TV show about a chess player. Like, what could be said in TV form about chess that hasn't already been said? What's new What that's going to be brought to the table by the series? And I can't really publicly speak to that because I'd spoil stuff, but um no there's a plot. It's interesting. Um I'm not even evaluating it from a realism perspective because people don't watch I mean people watch documentaries to hear about facts and such, but people watch um TV shows and dramas uh to be entertained more than anything else. Uh, so, yeah, some people say they truly enjoyed the series. Um, it seems very dramatic from what I read about the plot summary. Um, it's just killing me to not be able to go into specifics about it, but I mean, I guess I could say that like uh, I helped in uh, I was in, interviewed as part of a documentary for high school chess related stuff. Um, so uh, since I participated in an interview about that sort of documentary, like, I could tell you what real... Or I actually watched the documentary afterward. It was quite good. Um, but, uh, yeah, reality and television uh, don't often coincide. So when people say, oh, look, there's a series and it's about chess, I'm like, yeah, that's interesting. Um, but I always wonder. Like, I did thoroughly enjoy Searching for Bobby Fischer. Searching for Bobby Fischer um, has a lot of tension and is very much about uh, family and values and um learning to be um a good person and also learning to be a good parent like it was an amazing excellent film um So I'm trying to think of what I could say about the Queen's Gambit, given that like it's from a different era than Searching for Bobby Fischer was in terms of when it got produced. Um, it's intended for television rather than for a movie. So every so often, every episode, there has to be something happening. And for you to have that much drama... Um, you know, good things will happen, bad things will happen, and it's just hard to take it as seriously as you could take a real movie. Um, and again, I'm not here to criticize The Queen's Gambit for its realism, because we're there to be entertained. It's just, I guess it's not my thing. 
Um, that's what I'm trying to figure out how to say. I do see that they brought on a real chess expert um, to help develop their scenes. Um, I'm trying to recall whether or not Harry Potter had a similar situation where they were considering bringing in an expert and they either did or did not. I think they did. Um, Level of players are not well described. Are you talking about the Queen's Gambit or about something else? Um, yeah, okay, about the Queen's Gambit. Yeah, well, maybe that's deliberate. Like, the more specific they are with that sort of thing the less you would get into the actual plot that they're trying to get you excited about. Um, like, you don't have a chess series and have it be about chess. There's enough, like, coverage of real-world chess events that if you wanted to watch coverage of that sort of thing, you'd know where to go find it. But also, chess games are extremely slow. Um, not as slow as Shogi. Shogi is an even more patient, uh, game. If chess is a battle, Shogi is a war. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah, looking at what I did about the series, it seems to be as well made as can possibly be done. But also, yeah, I just don't know what to say. Because, like, I, I don't have any criticism without getting into the plot. And, like, I can't even criticize the plot because it's made for television. Um, it's not made to be in a movie form. I think perhaps greater justice could have been done to everyone involved if there were a movie. Um, all right, well, Stefan's feeling the heat here. There's a mate in one threat. Um, but now the pawn on f5 is loose. But maybe there's other threats here, too. Like, I've been, for a while, thinking about, is the bishop just going to take f5, or is it going to h5, or is there some other threat that black's going to make? It's just really hard to predict where all the threats are here. But yeah, bishop takes there, kind of intends bishop e4 next. So Stefan's trying to trade off material so he doesn't get mated. Um, and black might have to oblige. Yeah, black obliges with exchanging pieces and then trades off the center pawns and black is up uh, three pawns in an opposite color bishop endgame. So yeah, if you were to have like a actual... I don't know, it's hard to come up with chess games that can fit inside the span of an episode. Like, what we're watching right now is an actual chess game. And again, I would click on this, but this would activate the earthquake. There's nothing I can do about this, so we have to go view it um, in this mode instead. Um, in the first game in the series, it's shown that the game is slow. Yeah. So, like, if they were to focus on the chess part... Um, you would have, like, here's an endgame. This is an opposite color bishop endgame where black is up three pawns. But can white pieces activate themselves well enough to make up for or compensate for the material deficit? 
Note also that black has doubled B pawns. So the backward doubled B pawn is a weakness. Um, black manages to defend that, and so it appears that black is consolidated on the queen side. And having consolidated can now focus... Uh, oh. Um, yeah, white's not even going to try to hold on to the pawn, but we'll continue trying to check and get some activity, which is clever. Um, black obliges, which is kind of weird. Uh, maybe this was necessary, maybe, or maybe taking on a4 somehow decides things, but after this check... The h-pawn drops, and white's king might be safe. And this gets complicated, although if black can dislodge the bishop on c3, everything's uh, going to be fine. It's just I'm not sure how easily the bishop on c3 can be removed. Yeah, I don't think that taking the pawn there matters. Maybe somehow the doubled pawn does matter, but um, inevitably this will come down to can white find a fortress, and can black prevent white from finding a fortress. So, very hard fight ahead, but it looks like black is advantageous. It's just that... Uh, with the bishop on c3 and the pawn on b2, there might potentially be some positions where white can perpetual check and or exchange the bishop for two pawns, and then the king and rook and bishop versus king and rook is a draw. Oh, what's up with the earthquake? I don't know. You just like go to the tournament, click on the board there, and I have no idea because I'm bad at like web ui design but somehow yeah and i've tried turning off all my user styles and special stuff it doesn't matter like this is seemingly always reproducible in a 720p browser and other users are reporting it too so um this is an edge another user reported it in chrome i don't know what's up with it but it's Something I've noticed for a while, but I didn't want to be reporting it because my browser does weird things anyhow. I just chalked it up to using uh, non-standard fonts. Um, but if other users are seeing this too, perhaps it's not that. Yeah, I'm using open source fonts that are freely licensed so I can stream with them. Also, welcome, Pawn Hub. Amazingly, somehow I have two victories, although my second round game, um, my opponent kind of handed to me, which was extremely weird. But maybe they were tired or distracted. Um, almost certainly in the next three rounds, I'm going to face some extremely uh, challenging competition. All right, so note that rook takes bishop, well, even if it could remove, like, one or more pawns as well, would not be enough. Um, I don't think. Because invariably black could play rook c2 and then rook takes b2 and exchange the rook for a bishop and pawn and win uh, with their remaining b pawn. So... Black's going to try to move white's king out of the way. White's going to try to keep their king in the way and or find a stalemate trap. Um, which will be difficult to find. The bishop on d3 uh, on the light square does a good job defending multiple pawns. Uh, is black considering taking the b-pawn anyway, perhaps? If they think they can win this way, then why not? Hmm. 
I mean, one reason why not is there could be easier ways to win, but if it does win, then there's not a strong reason to avoid playing it. I'd expected black to, like, try to forcibly remove white's king from d2 here, but evidently that's not happening. So the bishop on d3 is kind of exposed. Um, I think at some point it'll move to a safer square on f5, making it easy for black to push their c-pawn. Um, see how white takes advantage of this moment to do the check and have the king attacking the bishop. But now the b-pawn runs up the board, and that's that. Unless there's a stalemate trap. Nope. All right, that's a resignation. There's one game remaining. Um, this is a draw. There is no way that either player can change this outcome. Even if the players try to make mistakes, it's going to be very hard to make a significant enough mistake to throw this. It could happen, but it's very unlikely even with a two-second increment. Yeah, both players should be able to hold this position without something catastrophic happening. Um, just kidding. Uh, end games are hard. Study your end games, folks. Um, yeah, this is dangerous as heck for white. That absolutely was not necessary. And now white has some tough decisions to make. King f4. King to the left one. No, that's not it. King f4 is the hard move. Well, okay. Maybe this is fine. Maybe I was overly pessimistic. Is white actually better here? Did I just mis-evaluate this entire sequence. Black has to keep their king next to the pawn, and they do, and white promotes first. Well, okay, I'm doing terribly commentating this. Um, uh, yes, I'm using edge, but another person has reproduced this with uh, Chrome as well. All right, Black resigns. 30 seconds to next round. So having won two in a row in a very competitive club, I'm going to get paired with a very strong opponent. Um, prepare for my defeat. Ooh, and I get black, too. So I can at least blame my loss on having the black pieces. How about that? If my opponent is at the computer and makes their move within the allotted time, they have good chance of winning this. Okay, there you go. We're going to play the Sicilian again. Ah, Max Thon 5 is essentially a chrome fork. Nice. Well, I am not an expert on the Sicilian, so I'm playing the accelerated Whatsy Doodle. Uh, I think that's the official name for it. And if I'm mistaken, um, then I'm mistaken. So I don't know if I had to play d5 earlier to get the mainline stuff. Maybe. I don't know this stuff very well. I pretend that I do. And someday it might serve me well, but right now I'm... Uh, kind of lost. All right, so we're transposing back into open Sicilian waters. Not that 
I usually play this from the white side of the position, so it's very strange for me to be doing this, but you know, I feel like we want to see some action here today, so uh, I'm going to risk blocking the long diagonal. Um, I'm sure there's some benefit somewhere to that. I just don't know what. Uh, what now? I guess we castle, and the idea is I want to play f5. I'm just not sure where my knight belongs. d6 looks like a reasonable candidate square for my knight. So let's back up and park the knight on d6 instead of f6. Okay, what? Um, this would be more convincing if they had places to put their remaining pieces. This actually blocks their B pawns, so I'm confused about what they're doing. Uh, okay, so if I push the A pawn, they get access to the B6 square. Otherwise, they're intending some knight moves and stuff. Um, interesting. Never thought about it this way. This is why we play the sharp stuff, to get new ideas for next time. Um, hmm. Well, we're going to play the sharpest move and hope that it's okay. I have bishop g5, I think I have h6 and such. Um... Here, my king is slightly exposed, so... Um, yeah, let's... I'm not sure if I should play h6 and king h7. Oh, that seems risky. Yeah, I have no idea. You tell me. I did see the question. I just hit, don't really have any idea. Um... I guess we'll play king h7 and bishop h6. Um, Alright. So they're attacking my a pawn. If I push the a pawn, I give up the b6 square. So I guess in the interest of protecting my squares, I'm going to play this. Um, okay, my big idea was to play pawn takes f5 here. Knight takes f5 looks interesting too. Knight takes f5 looks very interesting. Because it controls lots of squares on the king's side. And this knight seems kind of isolated off on the other side of the board. Um, pawn takes f5. Leaves the G5, well, leaves this pawn at risk too. <sighs> so, oh, pawn, if knight takes, they push the center pawn. That's extremely risky. I guess we're doing bishop takes. This opens the C8 square for my rook. Um,. Oh, well, that's clever too. But bishop f6 counters this. Um, even if it if it even needs to be countered, maybe it doesn't. Um, also, what is this even threatening? 
Why don't I just play queen d7? Uh, rook c7. Just kidding. Um, yeah, my king is exposed. My entire position's exposed. I need to try to solidify some of this. If bishop takes, rook takes. Um, tries to hold my position together. But yeah, d6 seems like a reasonable square for my rook. Or knight. Um, and now... I don't like this knight being on b5. Uh, rather, I prefer my king to be somewhere safer. So let's get the king out of harm's way of this queen. So there's no longer any shot with me moving the knight away and something terrible happening. So the shot is gone. Um, which means gradually I should be able to unencumber my position and come up with some kind of meaningful threat. Um, this knight is defended twice, so I can't... Oh. Well, now it's only defended once. Queen d7, rook c7. Uh, what's it going to be? That's interesting. Queen c7, rook c7. Or queen d7, rook c7. Queen takes, bishop takes, knight takes. Rook takes e7. Hurts. So that's not it. Um, all right. Knight takes, bishop takes. If I take this pawn, uh, he forks me. I fork him back takes my rook. I don't have any shot. Um, queen d7, rook, knight takes. Yeah, that could work. Rook takes, knight takes. I think this is okay. If rook c7, I have knight b5. If rook takes queen, I take their queen. Right, so this is another line. Um, So the knight's pinned, but can move out of the way to protect the queen. Um, hmm. Rook a8. Queen takes pawn. Hmm. Yeah, this position has not worked out at all. Like, I can't even make a threat in this position. All of my threats are futile. Um, I guess we'll try this. Give my bishop on f6 something to do. So I need my bishop to continue defending my queen. So, um, yes, my bishop defends both the knight and the queen, but nothing's attacking the knight. Um, so this defends my queen in event of some tactic happening. But yeah, he just munches another pawn. 
I can attack the queen and then the pawn behind it. Oh, I see. If I move this, knight check, bishop takes, pawn takes, my queen's attacked. That's tricky. I take their queen, they take my queen, I hit their pawn, they protect the pawn. I trade rooks, and then I take on b2, which is no good. Um... My knight on e4 is the problem. I need to deal with my problem piece and put it somewhere better. So I'm actually, I'm renewing this threat. Um, right, so he does something about it. And do I have another threat somewhere, anywhere? I don't think so. I think I'm finally out of ideas. Uh, let's get the king out of harm's way again. So we're down two pawns and under attack and don't have any attack whatsoever. And we're down five minutes. Um, this is kind of what I expected to happen. Irrespective of my opening selection. Um, at least we get kind of a fun game out of it. It's clever too. Uh, I would prefer not to exchange queens because this position's awful. Um, I don't have much of a choice here. My queen's trapped. Yeah, let's concede this. All right, well played. So that went about the way I expected. And I expect my next couple games to go much in a similar vein. This is a strong club. Um, and my reason for participating isn't to try to win the thing, but just to try to encourage as many players as possible to participate in this and say that our club has a serious interest in continuing and inviting people from the Chicago area to participate. So, um, what confuses me is why we aren't doing like a team battle where you could have multiple teams participate and each would be encouraging its own membership to increase. Um, Instead, to participate, everybody here has to join our club and also have the tournament password. Um, so I don't quite get that, but yeah, still good either way to try to encourage people to play, even if I'm not the greatest. And I guess what I should be doing more of is the post-game analysis. But yeah, there I was so heavily outplayed that I think I know my mistake was just that I didn't play d5 early enough and uh, my opponent just played a very convincing demonstration of why black needs to play actively and I just completely failed to play actively and got surrounded and crushed in that final position where I resigned, I was down two pawns. My opponent was forcing a queen trade, and I was still under attack. So, um, yeah, that's something to watch out for. Um, 
All right. So unfortunately, my game finished like, I don't know, two thirds of the way into the round. Uh, so we're going to sit and watch these other players finish their games. It looks like Black's king there is exposed to a severe attack and there's no hope of saving it. Whereas White's king seems to be um, safe enough. So White simultaneously threatens uh, Rook G1 as well as Pawn takes Pawn. And Black just cannot get enough pieces targeting any one single point in um, White's position. Alright, so Black intends Queen E4 check. Trying to hold on. Yep, pawn takes Pawn, crashes through. Um, Alright, King A1. And there's no way for black to exchange queens, and if black plays queen takes pawn, um, the queen gets pinned. If they play pawn takes pawn, uh, rook h8 is mate. So that's game. Uh, if they play rook c2, pawn takes pawn, and then the pawn promotes and mates. So there's no escape here. So next round, I'm going to be playing against another opponent who has two wins and one loss. Unless something strange happens with the pairings and I get paired up or down, but it's looking like I'll probably get paired against Stefan pretty soon. And that's going to be a very difficult pairing uh, because he's a very strong player. All right, we have another game. White's... Uh, White has less than a minute on their clock, and Black is threatening to promote the A pawn. Um, White brings their pieces together and gives up the A2 pawn, which Black takes. And then Black's just going to stick their rook behind the A pawn and promote it unless some better opportunity arises, so white resigns. Here, white has to defend against rook takes bishop, and they have. Uh, yeah, and it looks like white is up a solid rook, and black has no way to continue attacking. So that's game. I mean, well, okay, I said a solid rook. Um, yeah, bishop e4, rook g1. Um, well, okay, now that just loses. But no, the bishop was pinned. Doubling on the pin would be the only sensible thing to do. That way, white would have to defend the bishop and um, would lose the e-pawn. Here, white controls all of their pawns, or defends all of their pawns, so... Um, there's nothing for black to attack anymore. All black can do now is try to liquidate all the pawns and beg for a draw. Um, which is going to be really hard because black is down a rook. White threatens king g3 winning the rook. Black sidesteps the threat. White is eventually going to stop being all cutesy about it and just get to the point. Which is... Um, there's the point. Rook exchange cannot be avoided, and black has no attacking moves remaining. Black exchanges is still down an entire rook. Even if white were to play rook takes bishop, white would still be completely winning here. Um, I would take the bishop. I still would take it, just to demoralize the opponent. Uh, white plays a calm defensive move. Black hopes for some kind of cheapo. 
there's a check. The bishop's defended. Black backs up and hits a pawn. White gives up the pawn. Black takes the sacrificed pawn. White exchanges bishops. And now white is up a rook for a pawn. Usually this would be easy or even trivial. This will still take some effort because the pawn is advanced pretty far up the board. Um, so if white knows their stuff, they could still win this. Yeah, if white just takes all the pawns, black cannot win. Black needs to keep at least one pawn on the board. But for the king to support the g-pawn, um, it cannot also capture the e-pawn. So yeah, white figured it out, and it's going to take both pawns and just win. And black will probably resign. <laughs> oh, I forget. I forget who some of these players are. Yeah, black does not go down without a fight. But, no, it's over. Yeah, okay. A two-second increment is enough for a player to figure out how to checkmate there. Yeah, well played. And I've played against that opponent before, and I've played some very stubborn moves and dead lost positions against that particular opponent, because that's just our tradition. All right, here we go. We got the white pieces. Let's try to enjoy it. Looks like a Karo Khan. Let's transpose into the pan of Vinnick. My one real opening. So this prevents bishop g4, which means that knight f3 is not pinned. Um, now this does seed the tempo, but white has... Oh! What? Um, this is unusual. What's the idea with um, this bishop move, I wonder? What does this intend? All right, let's have some fun. This begs bishop takes knight to occur. Are all these not character things? You mean the chess figures? Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, what happened to all the shogi pieces? Um, truly a mystery. I am just so perplexed. This looks way too entertaining to pass up. Yeah, it looks like a horse. And not only that, it can like move backwards and sideways and stuff. Yeah, it's not like the shogi stuff where um, they only go forward. Okay, wow. Uh... Well, I got a fight, that's for sure. Jiminy Cricket. All right, so... Um, yeah, let's play this fork. It looks interesting. 
I said I was intending this. Right, so they defend against the obvious. Um, so this might be possible, or knight g5 might be possible. Um, hmm. Lots of things. Also, knight takes pawn could be possible. Knight takes, if knight takes knight, pawn takes, rook takes, is not so great. So let's rule that out. Um, The rook moves, pawn fork, bishop takes, pawn takes, knight moves. I don't have a checkmate. So let's pursue the attack this way. Um, which seems borderline extremely suspect. Because giving up two knights for rook and pawn in the best of circumstances is usually a bad thing. Um, but what counters that is that uh, this bishop on b4 is seriously misplaced. Um, so I have threats on f7, h7, maybe even I don't know what else. I'm trying to play queen a4 with tempo. Um, just might get my wish. Okay, I gave up the d pawn for this. I thought I had a plan. Where's my plan? Was I just bluffing the entire time? Knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, king takes, check, king moves. I'm out of ideas. Maybe I was just... knight takes, knight takes, bishop... no. Bishop takes, knight takes, queen, knight takes, knight. That's also a bluff. Um, how is it that none of these possibilities work? I could have sworn that at least one of these would be halfway okay. But evidently I just gave up a pawn for nothing. Um, and can't even find compensation. Huh. That is so strange. If I take twice on f7 and play f4, only if I can play pawn takes and they don't do anything, I'm okay. That's still much too optimistic. Um, well, I just didn't think that would work, and it works very well. I can't find any compensation for the pawn. If anything, my opponent has compensation. I have one tempo to make up some kind of phony attack. Um... Well, bishop takes, bishop takes pawn, takes here, king, rook takes, knight takes, king takes, rook here, bishop moves away, it's still not a real threat. <sighs> okay.
pawn f4, bishop takes, I'm losing the house. All right. Um, I'm just astounded that, like, even my attempts at cheapos all fail here. I can't find a single cheapo that, like, this is the best I can find, and it sucks. So this kind of sort of exposes their king, but my king is equally, if not worse, exposed. But if they just snap the pawn, if I take this pawn, like, I've actually pinned their knight. Bishop takes, knight takes, queen takes d4. Problem is the pawn defends the knight on d4. So I would be giving up a bishop and a queen. Oh. Okay. Wow. Okay. I did not see that either. Um, that's not a good sign. All right. Uh, my position's completely overrun and I have no attack. Well played. So, 15 moves. I know one player in our local area who could do that to me. And the problem is... Um, wait, didn't I see his name in the list here somewhere? If not, um, yeah. I know one player who could do that to me. Actually, I know two. There are two opponents who have attended our club who could do that. Um, that was brutal. So, yep, we've lost two in a row. Um, I'm curious how Stefan's doing. Uh, can't. If I could just, like, get the miniature board showing here, that'd be great. If I could, like, oh, here's the list of games. So you can watch all the games in progress. Here's Stefan. If he loses, we're getting paired. If he wins, we might also still be getting paired. Um, but yeah, whoever I get paired against next round will have two wins, two losses. It's still an extremely vicious, difficult club to play against, so, um, yeah. That was so brutal. Very well played. Honestly, um, I think the last time... I had a tournament game like that. It was against a master. Just masters will do that sort of thing to you. No, no. No. This is not good. If you don't believe me, here's the game analysis. In the final position, I'm down essentially a queen. Minus 7.8. This is a way of saying, not only has your attack failed, um, also you're losing all of your pieces and probably getting mated shortly thereafter. At this point, it's just unrecoverable. Rook takes e7 is a blunder. Knight g5 is the wrong way to try to punish it. Evidently, a3 here is the right way to try to punish it. And the engine's suggesting bishop takes c5 as black's only escape. 
which I don't understand. Um, I guess if the bishop escapes this way, then my knight g5 might be fine. So I could take on e5, I could take on... Yeah, I could take e5 either of these two ways. So yeah, rook e7's a blunder. Knight d6 is a blunder. Should just take here instead of getting into this complicated disaster. So lots of blunders all around. So it's not a good game. But um, when my opponent finally had a winning position, they pounced on it and did not let up. <sighs> yeah, Master would play more solidly than that. This is a blitz game. Um, but no, simply continuing to develop my pieces. Like, there was no way in that final position to develop my pieces. I was losing all of my pieces, and my king was under attack, and I had no attack. And I had lost the center, and the queen side, and the king side. And I had no pawn breaks, and my pieces had nowhere to go. Uh, yeah, at the beginning of the game, sure. Yeah, from the start position, just play the optimal move every move and you'll be fine. Um, it's just not easy to do. I did have a decent position up until the point that I blundered with knight d6. And if I just like kept calm and played decent moves, which is not my style, especially not for online speed games. Um, if I just kept calm, that would have been okay. But since we're playing for an audience, I play with fire and fireworks and apply fire to fireworks liberally. Um, so uh, we tend to see lots of excitement on this um, channel. But yeah, I, I saw that I could play knight d6, or that um, I thought if I'd played a3, it was just going to be a draw. Um, but no, the engine uh, stockfish 11 suggests that had I played a3, that position was significantly better for me. Because the bishop has to retreat, and then I can capture in the center and build up a colossal attack somehow. Well, a player's worth, even if you're talking about a player's ability, um, if you're going to measure their ability, you have to measure it in terms of the moves that they play, not the ones they don't play. Like, who measures an opponent's ability in terms of how they don't play. That seems very confusing. Like, if we were to just give players credit the same way some tournament players say, oh, if I just saw the one move, if I just played this, I would have had you. It's a very common thing for losers to say in tournaments. Um, and I use that word strongly because like these players have been saying it for years and they don't improve. I'm perhaps on the other side where I'm too self-deprecating. Um, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Here it's called withdraw instead of pause. What's this about team viewer? Really? What is this for? I didn't withdraw. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how to help him at this point. I'm trying to scroll down because this uh, 
sentence is incomplete, but there's nowhere to scroll down to. Yeah, you, a player cannot join in the last round of a Swiss. Uh, but also maybe there are some circumstances where it just somehow doesn't say join. But yeah, if you are joining, um, the tournament organizer here password locked the tournament. So it falls to the organizer to make sure that the players can actually hit the join button and know what the password is. There might be other ways to do this in the future. For example, if you were to run a team battle, um, then each team could only, or our players could have to join a team or a club um, in order to participate and the team leaders would have to approve the players joining the club. So password locking a tournament makes it difficult for players to join legitimately or otherwise. Uh, Alright, so it looks like this game will conclude soon. Yeah, I wonder if a player can join and then withdraw and then rejoin. I don't know if that's been tested. But if it's possible for a player to accidentally withdraw without confirmation, then you probably need to have some sort of confirmation dialogue. Although I think there is a confirmation dialogue and you do have to confirm to be able to withdraw. Um, but if there's some way that you can withdraw without confirming, then Leech Us probably should consider adding uh, a confirmation dialogue. So yeah, we're going to have one more tough game. I wonder who we'll get paired with. Somebody who's got two points. Stefan has more than two points, and uh, although, if you look at the top half of the tournament, I'm seed number eight, and the two-and-a-half-point group doesn't have another two-and-a-half-point player, so I'm going to get paired up, unless something weird happens to avoid rematches. So very likely I'm getting paired up. Um, so this will be the final round. Oh, what to play? Should we stick with the Sicilian? Just kidding. Um, let's play this. Let's play the King's Indian. Because that's sound. Curious. I don't understand what this Knight C3 is about. Are we transposing into something, perhaps? Uh, let me castle and then e5 and knight c6 and all that. I forget if I place e5 first or knight c6 first. I think both are playable. Um. Oh, 
Okay. Am I just hallucinating, or is e5 the move here? e5, pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes. I think this is playable. If not, we're going to learn something. Um, all right. Yeah, so I thought this was the main move. Um, usually in the past I've played knight h5 in tournament play. Here my opponent has left open this queen on the diagonal, so I might play knight e8 instead. Something doesn't look right. I think this is the Mar del Plata variation or something at the castle in F591. I seem to remember that from like modern chess openings. I seem to also remember that I've tried bishop g5 in the past and this bishop is just misplaced and is a target for me to attack. Um, I'm always instigating, so I'm going to instigate this way. So this is my extremely dangerous plan of pushing the pawns around my king while all my rest of my pieces are misplaced. Um, they have swiftly dealt with said plan, however... Um, Something's still not right. Is it a5 here, or is it knight a6? I seem to remember that either a5 or knight a6 is the move here. I've played a5 in tournament play. Although my queen's usually not on d7. But this way my knight can occupy c5. This is a bizarre way for me to play this position. So we've achieved a gridlock of sorts. I'm trying to undermine the e4 pawn so that uh, potentially my bishop could use the long diagonal. Yeah, my opponent plays a boring move. Um, let's put the knight on an effective square. Um, so obviously if they allow me to do knight takes bishop, I'm doing that and then kicking this bishop away, and then taking the center. So they're having none of that. Um, less obviously, I could play f5 here. This stuff could get interesting. It seems dubious. But what's he going to do if I play f5, intending f4? I don't know. Might try a bishop exchange. I need to know. Show me what happens if I play f5. I expect bishop h6. Um, but I don't know. Uh, this didn't seem so convincing to me. This pawn duo looks powerful. I'm still threatening f4. I mean, my king is in danger, but have I ever really thought about that, ever? I don't think so. 
So yeah, this is my short term threat. Long term, I might have King H8, Rook G8, and some kind of shot, Bishop H3. Right, so he deals with my short term threat. Um, don't understand this position. My pieces are all cramped. All right, so my bishop is defending stuff again. My queen's defending stuff. Um, stuff is very defended. Again, I have an eventual threat of playing rook either to g6 or g8 and doing stuff on the g file. Um... Okay, let's connect the rooks to make more threats. I keep delaying any kind of tension resolution here. Uh, also, this defends the b5 square in case maybe bishop takes knight somehow ends up being a good thing to do. I don't think it will be, but maybe somehow it will be. But yeah, I keep putting off rook f6. Well, uh, actually, rook f6 would have been costly, wouldn't it? Um, so I don't understand this either. Uh, bishop d8 almost looks like a threat, except I actually defend this square. I guess they were expecting bishop f6 or something like that. Or they expect that they can just go back and play bishop h6 themselves, since I've blocked rook f6 to g6. Um, I think my next move is queen h5. And I'm still slowly building an attack on the king's side. I think their problem is that only one piece can occupy the g5 square at a time. Alright, so here. Um. I don't want to block my bishop by playing my pawns on the light squares. Um, let's take my chances here. I think this is a reasonable chance to take. That I'm going to assert dominance over the light squares uh, with my pieces. So... I'm going to try to checkmate down the g-file, maybe try to play e4 and f3, maybe sacrifice something on the king's side. This looks plausible. Um, Alright, let's put the queen where I wanted to put it anyway. So yeah, this pawn is vulnerable as heck. Um, but if they actually try to take it, um, hopefully I can find some kind of counterplay. 
that's what I'm banking on. Yeah, okay. I don't have a check right now. But I'm attacking this, and I'm attacking that. And I don't think they have an easy way to defend everything without conceding, or without yielding some material. Just my pieces control lots and lots of squares, and their queen is shut out. The rook is not active. This rook is blocked by the f-pawn, and I might be able to get my knight out to h4 soon. If, like, my knight takes on g7 and then goes to f5. Well, if my knight goes to f5, the bishop takes f5, but still. Um... So... Ah, decisions. So delightful. I really wanted to take here. Knight takes. Um, but my knight by, could be more effective on f6. My king feels exposed on g7. Um, but I think I'm being irrational. The rational way to look at this is if knight takes... Well, they can't defend the knight and the bishop. So what am I thinking so hard about here? Um, yeah, let's keep my king safe in the corner. Defend this square as much as we can. And then just win the bishop when he gives us it. Bishop is, uh, well, I was going to say it's trapped. It's not. I'm hallucinating pretty poorly. Uh, so yeah, if 96 bishop takes, and they can't simultaneously escape the bishop and capture my bishop. keep imagining something grandiose where, like, I play knight f5 and it confines the bishop, and therefore I can play, like, bishop takes, rook takes, and then the other rook to g8, and somehow it mates. Uh, and while that might exist, like, it certainly seems that I must have something easier here. Because uh, I can hit both the knight and the bishop. And I don't see a way for them to defend both. Uh, I guess they're considering knight c e4, which falls to knight b3. It might also fall to other moves, um, like knight takes knight. Knight takes, yeah, so they defend the bishop, which yields this knight. Um, not a whole lot to analyze there. And next I can start liquidating pieces, with like bishop h3 or bishop f5. Uh, bishop h3, they could push this pawn. And pawn takes, pawn takes, and I don't have a mate. Um, yeah, I think... Hmm. Man, I want. I really want there to be a mate. I'm so desperate for a checkmate that. Man. 
willing to pass up an easy win for it. This is the easy win. This is what clearly and obviously I should be doing. And if bishop takes, bishop takes, and I have just a zillion tactics against everything here. So I've surrounded the bishop on h7. If the bishop on h7 moves, I have rook g8. Um, but also, like, my knight has lots of possibilities. So there's stuff going on here, to put it mildly. Uh, if the queen goes to a dark square, I go to one of these squares and fork everything. Um, and that's in the worst case. Like, potentially I have better than the fork. Potentially, like, rook g8 just mates. It doesn't, but potentially it could. Um, so I think first we threaten the mate, and then we take the rook in the corner. Is that right? Uh, there's so many good moves here. Just don't play this one. Um, but yeah, we've got good moves galore. Um, Is the queen going to be able to defend d4 somehow? All right, we'll make use of my least active piece first. So this threatens this as well as that. Um, I'm not even sure that knight f3 would be useful, but it is threatened. Yeah. Knight f5 was very nice, because it forces my opponent to give up their best piece for my worst piece at a time where I'm very interested in attacking. Um, so... Yeah, let's continue taking stuff. Um, Hmm. I just want there to be a mate. It's not so simple. All right, fine. We'll defend everything for a move. There's nothing convincing my opponent can do here. Um... Just pile up everything on the g-pawn. Maybe bishop h3 might have been more to the point. Um... So this is the idea. I have to move the king. This is the other idea. This is the other other idea. Um, this is the other 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 idea. Although this one doesn't look so convincing. Um, Not sure if that actually threatens mate. Just smells like mate. Um, all right, so all the pieces are lined up against this square. 
and if it moves I can take it either en passant or normally depending on how it moves. Um, you have to do everything with check here. You can't get too fancy. Good game. Well played. Oh wow, everybody got to see that finish. Because mine was the last game to finish. Um, right. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, that was one hell of a fight at the very end. Um, congrats to the top three players who played extraordinarily well this tournament.